I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, is brought to you this week by Roku. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I tell you what, it's going to be an unusual program today. So just hang in there. First of all, I'm doing it on a Sunday, which is strange enough. I normally do it on a Saturday. Secondly, Fred, you know, my old buddy that puts the stuff up on the screen, is on vacation. <laughs> What are you going to do? Not going to have any comments this week. Puts a lot of pressure on me, I'm telling you. Anyway, I don't know what we'll do. We'll just have to we'll have to see how it goes. By the way, we're proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. And you know there's lots of stuff here. So let's get into the stuff, shall we? Okay. First of all, a new version of Audacity is out. Now, I'm telling you, if you do anything at all with audio, meaning editing it, cleaning it up, fixing it, getting all the little pop noises out of your old LP records, whatever, <laughs> you need Audacity. Audacity. Kind of like audio and Audacity and yeah, you get it. Anyway, but Audacity is awesome. I use it all the time. And this, the new version, there's there's already been kind of a new new version, which is version 2 came out. It was at like 1.2 something for a long, long, long time. <laughs> and then it went to 1.3 uh, beta. And then they finally brought out 2.0, which was basically 1.3 beta that went live, so to speak. And now they've got 2.0.1. Basically, it's some bug fixes. But here's... Well, I won't list all the stuff. I've got it listed there on the blog. You can read it for yourself. It's a lot of stuff. Lots of bug fixes. Lots of little things that needed to be done. But I'm telling you, if you downloaded 2.0, of course, you need to download 2.0.1. And if you haven't downloaded it at all, if you're new to Audacity... Dude, you're missing out because it's open source, totally free. Uh, there's versions for every platform. My goodness, it's awesome. So you need to check into that. Yes. All right, next item. Microsoft announces aggressive upgrade price for Windows 8. This was big news this past week. And that is Microsoft did something that Microsoft doesn't normally do, which is something rational. <laughs> Yes, if you have a legal, legal version, you have your little code and everything, and it's legal, uh, from Windows XP on, so Windows XP, Vista, and Windows 7, you can upgrade, once Windows 8 is released, you can upgrade for $39.99. I've got something tickling my eyelash, and it's driving me nutty. <laughs> anyway. $39.99. Now, not only is it an upgrade to your previous version of Windows, it is Windows 8 Pro. So, like, if you had regular old Windows 7 Home Edition, you qualify for $39.99 to upgrade to Windows 8, the Pro version, for $39.99. Dude. Now, you might say, well, Dr. Bill, why do you think they're doing that? Well... First of all, Microsoft wants you to upgrade, obviously. And there's still a lot of people sitting around on Windows 7 and still using it, and they're happy as clams, and they don't, they don't want to upgrade. But $39.95, they might be tempted, because support for Windows 7 will go away April of next year, meaning you won't get any more security updates, and your platform will not be secure any longer. So that's an incentive. The other thing is... They want everybody to go Metro and get into the new interface so that they can have a similar interface on their Windows phones as well as your PC, as well as tablets and everything else. They want everybody to move. So, 
they want to increase the market size of Windows 8 when it comes out. So, but anyway, $39.95, I mean, or $99, $39.99, that's just, that's nearly reasonable. So, I think it's a good move on their part, and we'll see how it all works out for them. Yes. They even have an upgrade wizard that helps you upgrade and keep all your files and everything. I mean, it sounds like they're almost doing something reasonable. And I'm suspicious of that, actually. Yes. All right. Next item. This is a big one. DNS changer victims will lose their internet access this coming Monday, which is tomorrow as I record this. In other words, uh, on July the 9th. Now, here's the reason. People that have been infected with the Trojan DNS changer had their DNSs changed to this bank of fake DNSs, or captured DNSs maybe is a better way of putting it, uh, and have been surfing the internet based on that information ever since. Even if you got infected a year ago, you may be using DNS servers that are part of this evil scheme. So the FBI captured all of these, and they, Monday, are going to turn off those DNS servers. So if you have had your DNS changed to that bank of servers, and they turn it off, then you're not going to have any way to resolve anything on the Internet. And so you'll be kind of stuck out there on an island by yourself. So what you need to do before that time is go to this link that I have here, which has a, a link to the special website that will check for the DNS changer uh, Trojan and get you fixed up. Know what I'm saying? So check that out. Go to the blog, Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L dot TV, as it says here. Go there and look up the article on DNS changer and you'll find that link and that will be good. So check yourself out. And if you're watching this past Monday, then you're not affected because you can still watch things. <laughs> and if you're sitting there going, it's not working, then you can't hear me anyway. So, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> I also want to mention our sponsor this week. Our sponsor again is Roku. Roku, dude, I don't really know what I'd do without my Roku box. I use it every day, and I kid you not, every single day, because right now we're working our way through uh, uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and we watch Sherlock, which is a, a British science fiction show. Oh, science fiction. It's not science fiction, I guess. I guess it would be fantasy. Uh, typically, I watch science fiction, but Sherlock is like an updated modern version of Sherlock Holmes from the BBC. Awesome. Anyway, I like to watch odd things <laughs> through my Roku, but you can watch regular old movies too if you have like Netflix or, uh, of course, Crackle or some of the other venues through which you can watch all kinds of stuff. Now, you say, well, Dr. Bill, you know, I what do I need to do? I want a Roku box. Well, here's what you do. Go to that aforementioned drbill.tv, look on the right-hand column, and you'll see kind of an orangish-red box there that says Roku, okay? Click on that. Now, here's why I want you to click on that. I'll just be honest with you. If you click on that, it helps out the doctor and helps keep the silliness going here on the netcast because I get credit for sending you to their site, okay? So don't just don't just go to Roku.com, click through that link and it will help the doctor. And then buy yourself a Roku. The link that it takes you to takes you to from that orangey red looking box, that link will take you to a special page that has all kinds of deals for you. So check that out. Yes. Oh! Yes, that was a Geek Software of the Week drum roll. And it's for a Linux Geek Software of the Week, a very special one. This is a distro. You know, I've, I've talked to you before about distros. Linux distros are uh, the distributions, distributions of Linux. Like I use Ubuntu 
on mine, and you may use Debian, or you may use Red Hat, or you may use any number of distros, but this is a separate distro that's unique, and I've been playing with it in VirtualBox, and it's really cool. I installed it there, and I've been looking at it. Dude, this is called Zorin. Zorin OS. Now, it's not Zorin the guy who was the bad guy on Star Trek Generations. Okay? No, not the from the movie. You know, he was he was crazy. Crazy. <laughs> but anyway. No, this Zorin is a distro that is very Windows user friendly. If you're a Windows user and you don't know much about Linux, this I, I really believe is the distro for you. It actually looks very Windowsy. And everything is right where you would expect it to be if you were a Windows user. So check it out. Here's some good reasons, some advantages for using Zorin. No risk of getting viruses, okay, because it's Linux. Uh, much faster than Windows 7. Dude, it is light and fast. You can use it on somewhat older hardware. It's easy to use with a familiar desktop, like I said, very Windowsy. Customizable user interface thanks to the look changer. That's a feature that you can actually very easily and graphically go in and change the look of your screen. Stable as it's based on the robust Linux operating system and it's actually based on Ubuntu so it's very good. Uh, all the software you'll ever need right out of the box already installed LibreOffice and and uh, VLC for your audio and video. Uh, all the stuff that I normally install is right there already. Pretty cool. Uh, extremely versatile and customizable open source software and available in over 55 languages. Now, you know, I only speak English, so I don't need that part. But hey, maybe you want to share it with somebody in Czechoslovakia. You can, and they'll be able to use it. It's awesome. I'm telling you. So check it out. Now, while you're moving to Linux, you may say, well, Dr. Bill, you know, can I use my existing printer with Linux? Well, let me give you a tip, a hint and a tip here. And that is the next item, which is, will my printer work well with the Linux? Again, I have the link posted on the uh, Dr. Bill site, drbill .tv. Uh But it's a, it's a fairly short URL, so I'll go ahead and give it to you here too, and that is www.openprinting.org slash printers. Go to that and you can actually do a little selection menu, drop down menu, find your printer and it will tell you how well it works with Linux. Dude, so that's cool. Nice little hint there that, that might help you out. Whoa! <laughs> Another Geek Software of the Week, this Geek Software of the Week. Wow, two drum rolls in one program. I'm kind of feeling a little a little put upon. Anyway, here's the thing. This Geek Software of the Week is for Windows. Windows, 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 only Windows. Okay, we had a Linux one, now we got a Windows one, so that's fair. Windows, and this one is called Key Tweak. Now this answers a question or a problem that I've had several times. And that is when I want, wanted to define a key or a key sequence to do specific things. You can do that any number of ways. There's all kinds of ways to do it. This is really slick. You install this key tweak program and it allows you to graphically select your key sequence and assign it stuff. Stuff you want it to do. So it's really cool and basically it does it by manipulating the registry safely. So this is awesome and you really need to check into it. It's handy, I'm telling you. Very, very handy. Now, last item for the week is this. I use, for myself personally, I use a an email client that is web-based called Squirrel Mail. Okay? It connects directly to my server, my personal server, where my email is, and it's web-based, and I like it a lot. But before I used, well, that's not really exactly accurate. I used Squirrel Mail for years and years and years and years, and then I switched to Thunderbird, which is a local, regular email client. 
And then I switch back to Squirrel Mail. Squirrel Mail is just, it's got a lot of stuff built into Squirrel Mail that I really like, and so I went back to it. So, but prior to my last change, I used Thunderbird. Well, they're, they're stopping development of Thunderbird. So if you're a Thunderbird user, I'm sorry. I got to tell you, it looks like this last version may be the last version. Now, they're claiming that, no, 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 we're not stopping development, but they've reassigned all the developers. Uh, guys, you can't have it both ways. If you reassign all the developers, you know, you guys at the Mozilla Corporation, then who's going to develop it? You know what I'm saying? Unless somebody else picks up the ball. So, but you know, I think it's because they're concentrating so hard on their browser these days. They really just have lost interest in the email client. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. That's not what they say in the article. But, you know, sorry guys, Thunderbird is doomed. <laughs> doomed. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. Now, as I said, Fred is on vacation. And I'm about to be too. <laughs> so I'm going to join Fred on vacation. I'm going to play in the water. Swim. Read. I, I said read like I'm reading a regular old book, but I'm actually reading a Kindle, so it's more of a flip. Flip. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, remember until next time that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.